Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist. And back there is Cindy Oliver and she's a food expert. Well, an expert at eating food anyway. In this video, we are going to be looking at apple cider vinegar and whether or not it helps with weight loss. Now, you've probably already seen lots of videos by attractive, fit-looking people telling you how they use apple cider vinegar. And you're probably wondering why you'd want to listen to a rather ordinary looking middle-aged woman. Well, the reason is because I'm not going to tell you what I do. I'm going to tell you what the science says. Most people who look trim and fit probably do a number of different things to keep that way. And they have no way of knowing which things actually work and which things don't. As I've said before on other subjects, the only way to really know what works is with properly designed clinical trials. So let's go back to the science and have a look at what it says. And first, let's have a look at what apple cider vinegar actually is. So producing apple cider vinegar or other vinegars is a two-step process. In the first step, sugars are fermented by yeast to make ethanol, aka alcohol. And in the second step, the alcohol is oxidized by bacteria to acetic acid. And it is this acetic acid that is believed to be the main component responsible for the effects of apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar does also contain some polyphenols and other goodies that are known to have beneficial health effects, but the quantities are quite low, so they are unlikely to have any effect on weight loss properties. And what this means is you don't specifically need apple cider vinegar. Any vinegar will do. So if you prefer balsamic vinegar, there's no reason to change. Now to the big question, does apple cider vinegar or any other vinegar help you lose weight? Now, there have been quite a number of studies looking directly at this question, some in rats and some in people. Given studies in people are more relevant because we're not rats, we will just look at them. To the best of my knowledge, the largest study looking at the effects of apple cider vinegar on weight loss is this trial here. It was a double blind, dude, Cindy. It was a double blind randomized trial that included 175 people. Now, that's not a huge number of people, but it's the largest trial we have. The subjects were randomly assigned to three groups, a low group dose group who received 15 mils of vinegar, a high dose group who received 30 mils and a placebo group. The subjects drank the test beverage in equal proportions after breakfast and after dinner. Other than that, they could eat what they liked except foods that contain vinegar for obvious reasons. This was continued for 12 weeks and there was also a four-week post-treatment period. And it's worth mentioning that although in the title the people are described as obese, that's the Japanese definition of obese, which is a BMI of 25 to 30. In Western countries, that would be considered overweight, but not obese. So what did they find? So this table summarizes the results of the study. And to make the results of the study easier to understand, I've converted the body weight into the weight change for each time period. So as you can see, the people who took the placebo at the end of the 12 weeks actually gained 0.4 kilos. And this stayed fairly similar with it being 0.3 kilos four weeks post-treatment. Those who took the low-dose apple cider vinegar had lost 1.2 kilos at the end of the study, which was 12 weeks, but they gained it all back in the four weeks post-treatment. Finally, those who took the high dose of apple cider vinegar lost 1.9 kilos at the end of the 12 weeks. 
And after the four-week post-treatment, that went down to 0.4 kilos. Now, for those of you who still use pounds, that means for the higher dose of apple cider vinegar, they lost approximately 4.2 pounds over a period of 12 weeks. Now, that's not really a lot, but it's better than a slap in the face of a wet fish. So does this just mean that you need to start drinking apple cider vinegar to see these results? Or is it a bit more complicated than that? Well, to answer this question, we first need to look at how apple cider vinegar works to help you lose weight. But first, let's have a look at how it doesn't work. In this trial, they looked at how much energy was burned when vinegar was added to the diet compared with not adding it. And they looked at this for both people when resting and also for people when exercising. These are the results for the people when exercising. And they looked at two different intensities of exercise. The white bars are prior to the start of the study. The dotted bars are the people who were taking placebo. And the solid black bars are for the people who took the vinegar supplements. And as you can see, there was no difference whatsoever in the amount of carbohydrate burned or in the amount of fat used at either intensity. And they also saw the same results for those in the arrested state, but they didn't do a pretty picture of that. It was just a table. So I'm showing you the figure because that's nicer. So what this means is simply drinking apple cider vinegar or any other vinegar won't actually increase the amount of calories that you burn, whether you are resting or exercising, and it won't help you burn any more fat. So why do people adding vinegar to their meals see a modest reduction in weight? The most likely explanation is something that has been seen in a number of studies, and those studies are summarised in this systematic review. And if you want to know more about systematic reviews, I've made a video that provides more information and I will leave a link to it in this video's description. In this systematic review, they looked at the effect of consuming vinegar with a meal on the amount of glucose released into the blood. And generally, it's preferable to have a slow release of glucose into the blood as opposed to a spike followed by a dip. In this chart, the black boxes represent the results of each study and the horizontal lines show the error margin for each study. Anything to the left of the vertical line means that the results favoured vinegar and anything to the right of the vertical line means it favours control. I think Favros is supposed to say favours. If the error bars are also on the left of the vertical line, it means that the results were statistically significant. And it's fairly clear that in most studies, vinegar slows down the release of glucose. And if we look at the diamond down the bottom, which is a summary of all the studies, you can see it's completely to the left of the vertical line. So overall, vinegar has a favorable effect on glucose levels in the bloodstream. And the analysis also showed a similar favorable effect on insulin levels. So in effect, Consuming vinegar with a meal lowers the glycemic index of the meal and you don't therefore have a rapid peaking glucose followed by a rapid decline. And generally this means you will last a lot longer before being hungry again. Now you may have noticed that I said you get these benefits when you consume vinegar with a meal. Does this really matter? Could you still get the same benefits if you drank vinegar between meals or before you went to bed? And will you get more benefits if you take more? Let's have a look. In this paper, they describe a number of studies they performed assessing the effect of vinegar on blood glucose levels following a meal. Firstly, they looked at two doses of vinegar, 10 grams and 20 grams, and they found there was no benefit in increasing the dose from 10 grams to 20 grams. So less is more. Now, this may seem inconsistent with the previous study we discussed where the higher dose gave the greatest benefit, but it is important to remember that the higher dose was only equivalent to about 15 grams of vinegar per meal in the previous study. 
They also compared giving vinegar five hours before a meal with giving vinegar during the meal, and they found it was only effective if given during the meal. So taking vinegar before you go to bed, like some people recommend, will not help with weight loss at all, and it's likely to just give you heartburn and rot your teeth. They also looked at whether vinegar still had an effect if it was given with a dextrose solution as opposed to a meal containing complex carbohydrates, in this case a bagel. And they found that vinegar was only effective in decreasing blood glucose levels if it was given with complex carbohydrates. Finally, they looked at whether instead of liquid vinegar, taking powdered vinegar in the form of sodium acetate would be beneficial. And they found that it wasn't. This means buying so-called apple cider vinegar capsules will not provide any benefit at all. The final thing that is important to look at is how vinegar is consumed. Now, a lot of people recommend mixing the vinegar with water and drinking it. This was assessed in this study here. And what they found was that consuming vinegar in this way twice a day led to erosion of tooth enamel after just eight weeks. So you may lose a few kilos from consuming apple cider vinegar, but the downside is that you could end up with rotted teeth. However, it is important to remember that mixing apple cider vinegar with water and drinking it isn't the only way to get vinegar into your diet. A large number of foods contain vinegar. As an example, here's a few things that I found in my fridge. And when vinegar is incorporated into food, the overall pH of the food will be much higher than if vinegar is consumed by itself in water. And the higher the pH, the lower the acidity. Now, some people also recommend just drinking vinegar in water through a straw so that you can avoid it coming into contact with your teeth. This, however, won't stop it damaging your esophagus, which you also don't want to do. And quite frankly, vinegar doesn't sound particularly pleasant as a drink. And personally, I don't believe in any type of dietary intervention which requires too much suffering. So in summary, apple cider vinegar appears to have a modest effect on weight loss. However, it must be consumed with a meal containing complex carbohydrates to have an effect. And if you want to keep your teeth, it's best to incorporate it into your diet as part of your food, as opposed to mixing it with water and drinking it. And you definitely don't want to drink it without water because that would be even more acidic. If you'd like to look further into the studies that I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. Thank you for listening. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button so that more people will see it. And if you'd like to see more videos about the science in the future, please hit the subscribe button.